Good. I got, I just got, I'm, I got Saturday morning hair. Not helping. Not helping. Hey, come on, I'm Italian. We care a lot about our hair, eh? Didn't you see Saturday Night Fever? No. It's just naturally like this. Oh, can't hear. Okay, now you guys should be able to hear me now. So, sorry, I was muted while I was playing the audio from the, uh, you know, that happens all the time. I start the show, and you can't hear me for like 15 seconds because I've, uh, um, because I've muted myself. Because, you know. They call that, they call that a feature. Yeah. <laughs> they call that user, <laughs> user error. So, oh. so anyway, want to welcome everybody. Um, we've got, uh, this is a kind of a special show. Um, and actually special for me. So I'm going to, um, you know, Tommy, as you guys all know, is, is you know, in the middle of launching a, uh, you know, a console that we all love and are getting ready for and all that stuff. And um, and much as I love to talk about that and, um, and all the things we do, I thought today we'd take a little break from that. And we'd, we'd kind of switch gears and talk about um, actually what, what my real um, uh, fandom of of you, Tommy, is, and that is music. Um, yes. So thought I'd get you out of your amico element for just a little bit. Talk, Thank you. Talk Thank some, you. <laughs> talk some music and and have some fun. I, I actually hey, hold on. You don't want me to tell you how this works? Because <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it for the next half hour. <laughs> hey, look, family, family co-op. Oh my goodness! or less. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I got. That's excellent. So oh, I brought the little, I brought oh, the piano a... over. I wanted to. Oh. I was ready for. I was ready for this. So this is all right. So true okay. words, true words, man. Yes. This is the conversation and the bucket list kind of talk that I have always wanted to have with you and i am talking about over the course of the last 25 years of my life wow. um yeah thanks for putting the pressure on now <laughs> i have to be good or else you're gonna you're like you know dude hold on that thing they say they they never never meet your heroes you'll be disappointed i you know? so now, well, now you got the pressure on i sure. am not disappointed in any way <laughs> shape or form trust me this has been this has been something i've told you this privately like you being the president of Intellivision is kind of gravy for me. It's kind of bonus material. My, <laughs> I have, and, and I've said this publicly, there are two people in the game industry whose music has actually influenced me, um, has made me want to get better at my own, at my own craft, and, and who has been two of my like, video game soundtrack idols. There's Spencer Nielsen, and there's Tommy right. Tallarico, and not in that order. Not in that order. Um, you know, you have you have created some of the coolest music that I've I've listened to throughout the last what thirty years now. Um, wow. and, and you know, some of it's sitting right here in front of me. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I look. And I brought this thing over because you, I told you that I was working on some of this. Um, yeah. and, and when I hear, there's just some, there are iconic pieces of music that, you know, I rip from, from these and, and put, on my, uh, put on my PC and I've got on my phone and have been like my, my ringtones and things like that. And, you know, when I hear them, I immediately know what I'm listening to. So, to take you on a to take you on a quick journey, right? When I hear this, <laughs> I go nuts. Oh, the yes. drums were right about Yes, I know, I know. <laughs> I go. I play the drums. Oh, hold on, right here. <laughs> Bye. 
I am so that is the stuff to sure that sounded like garbage. No, it actually didn't. What what's funny is is there's probably a hair bit of a delay in in Skype to where we're probably off by like a half a second. But those are the things that that just you know, that's my my love and I love to listen to it. I love to to learn it and I love to play it. And this for me today is just I want to I want to kind of dig into your mind a bit and of course get, you know, people who don't know you and know, you know, they know of you from Amico, but they don't know the Tommy Tallarico that has been, you know, at the forefront of of game music. So that's my goal today. And maybe cool. you know, well, well speaking of that, let me tell you about our controller. <laughs> Accelerometer, uh, force feedback, uh, touch, color touch screen, 64. Dr- oh, sorry. Sorry, I'm just, I'm just, I just, I might, I might. <laughs> you might, I might shift. Right. I you're, might just go into that uh, <laughs> on accident and you just have to slap me around because I'm so used to. Yeah, I know. I know. And that's, you know, hey, look, you, you're a busy man. And, and to be honest with you, I appreciate this. You and I have had discussions offline, you know, and it's really cool. Um, it's really actually surreal that you and I just kind of talk, you know, and <laughs> and and, and have become friends over this last year. Because I met you last year when you were doing, you know, look, Amico brought us together, um, which yeah. is what the whole point of the console is. But even before that, see, look, now you got me doing it. <laughs> See, yeah. you got me doing you're, it. You're just on auto. You just you but, can't stop bringing it up. But it brought but it, it brought us together in an interview last year about the console. But then we started talking about other things, and I've spent the last year going, "Holy shit, I'm friends with Tommy Tallarico." I mean, at that that there's I, as a musician myself, there's it, it's wild. It's still surreal to me that that we could sit here and have this talk. I mean, that's... Let me, uh, let, me, let me shout out to the folks in the chat. A lot of mm-hmm. familiar faces and a couple of new ones. Uh, Anthem, Lance Jennings, Grudge, my man. Yep. Level one online, DJC Game Studio. Yeah, Chuck. Um, I love Chuck, man. He's great. Sean Dell's Sean great. Dell. Uh, it, it's funny. Somebody asked a question already. Um, they were talking about Seventh Guest. Um and uh, yeah, seventh guest. The music was done by the Fat Man, George Sanger, and I did uh, a lot of the sound design stuff. So me and George worked together on on the seventh guest. But nice. And and there um, there are a. I mean, if you go to your to your um, to your actual webpage, Website. Tallarico.com, yeah. There's a place where you can see all the games that you've been involved in. And I mean, the list yeah, is that, that, that list is about to get a lot longer at the end of this year. <laughs> I bet. Yeah, right? And, and, and you know, a, a whole to, brand new in television section. Yes. It's going to be so, 50 games right which, off the which top we are gonna, Which we are going to talk about that. We are going to go over kind of that part of it too, but uh, maybe a little later. Um, yeah. You mean the console that has the controller? <laughs> you know, it comes with Tommy, you know that comes Tommy, with two controllers. Tommy, Tommy, stop! And, and you Tommy, can hook up your mobile device Tommy. to it too. Oh, Tommy, sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> hey, I know where that's from. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I have. So look, I'm. I, I mean, that's a blues coda, but I use it yes. in, in like four of my games as a, you know, because I love the blues. Oh, I love those. Co- I mean, look. Well, let me ask you this: Have you noticed that every Mario song is in the key of C? Have you have you yeah. realized that? I mean, well, the- I, I can tell you about many long conversations that I've had with Koji Kondo about the Mario music, how he came up with it, what his focus was. I mean, you know, uh, look at that. he's going, he's oh, going. Yeah. You know, it's funny you're playing that on the piano. Uh, So, so the uh, so the very first time that Koji Kondo ever performed uh, in America, 
he he performed with me on stage in San Francisco. Nice. And during one of my big video games live concerts, and Shigeru Miyamoto was in the audience, and um, uh, the the Zelda uh, director. Uh, oh gosh, I forget his name. Um, but uh, um, ah crap, I'm 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 horrible with Japanese names. I don't want to butcher it. So out of respect, I'll say the guy the game director of uh zelda and um oh what's his name was there too uh the voice of mario um oh uh yeah 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 yeah. um hold on i know that one because i've seen him before at video game uh uh charles uh martinet charles martinet charles martinet yeah and uh anyway so all these guys are you know are, are buddies of mine or whatever and and i have great video i i gotta start uploading stuff i mean i just i wish i had the time but I have all I have great video of me and Koji Kondo sitting at a piano in a 3000 seat venue, which people haven't come into yet because we were just rehearsing. And um, and he's you know, he's showing me this blues kind of bluesy, jazzy version of Mario that he arranged just for that show that night and he was playing it for the first time for me because we were talking about you know because everybody plays it you know like like you did just there which is great and and but he and so he wanted to do somebody something different uh because he was saying he goes you know we were joking about it and this is like kind of when youtube first came out and he was joking about it because he was like he's like yeah you know he watches all these videos of people playing mario on the piano and they're all 10 times better than him. <laughs> you know? Like, cause they're well, like amazing. Right. I, I see the same thing too. Like people will cover my music or, you know, remix, you know, redo versions, rearrange my music. And I'm like, Oh wow, that sounded a thousand times better than I ever did it. Um, and so, uh, and so he wanted to do something that was familiar, but was completely new and unique. I have this tape cause I had people recording us I, I got to put that up there. I got to, because it, it's a digital tape too. I mean, it should be in 1080. I would, I think it was sort of probably 13, yeah, 15 years ago, maybe. So, yeah, no, no, wait. That was 2000 and, uh, it was 2006. So, what's that? Yeah, uh, about 15 years 14, ago. 14, 15, yeah. We're at 15. Jeez. Good grief. So, anyway, but, uh, <clears throat> Yeah. So, and and if and if the uh, I guess if the chat has any questions, we'll try to absolutely we'll try to keep our eye on that as well too. So yeah, I mean, so so I I so like again, those kind of things just get me. The other one, of course, is is um, you know, and and I'm not trying to make it, make it a concert or anything, but I just wanted to, you know. Um, uh, so now it's, I, I had it in my head a minute ago. Um, Le- Level Online says it was it, 2006. It was probably 480p or 720. Yeah, it, it was could an, be. It was an expensive camera, so yeah, it was probably 720 then. But yeah, I think. Well, it was. It was the. It was on those little digital tapes. Yeah. You know? uh, so whatever those. Were. Uh, probably, but, yeah, uh, probably 40i. Yeah. 40i. So, like, even when I hear the beginning of, I mean, Terminator is one of my favorites. So, you know, you've got multiple songs on there. You know, the other mm-hmm. one, of course, is the beginning of the song that played at the beginning of our demo. And since you wouldn't send me the music, I had to learn this by ear. I don't have the music. There is no <laughs> shit. It's faded up all up. That's awesome. Wow. I've never heard this on the piano before. This is great. Keep going. Well, then it goes, you know, I don't have the, like, the drums and all that, but... I almost had it! Almost had it! That's great! So I, but but these are the things that I'm learning because when I hear them, it's not just about hey, let me see if I can impress Tommy Tallarico. I really love the the style that you put in, and you know, 
you've talked about this before. Talk about real quick the what the Terminator on Sega CD has done for the industry and and how how you influence the industry with it because you've told this story before and I love it. Yeah, well, did you uh, did you see that there was a recent article? Actually, I actually have it pinned on my Twitter uh, from a huge comic book thing, CBC or something it was called, and 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 I didn't I didn't know the writer or anything, but uh, they wrote a huge article on how the the Terminator on Sega CD changed video game music and influenced. Uh, you know, generation of people. And it was really cool. I was like, I didn't even know this was happening. Just somebody sent it to me. I'm like, what the hell? Wow. Um, but the, yeah, the amazing thing about Terminator and I started writing, uh, well, I started recording it in 1993, 92 or 93. I forget exactly. It might've been the end of 92. Um, so gosh, almost coming on 30 years. Can you mm-hmm. believe this? I know. Insane. I know. Uh, and, uh, so the things about Terminator is that keep in mind, you know, music before that was, you know, a lot of bleeps and bloops and, and CD-ROM stuff had just started coming out. Um, you know, there was stuff in Japan, there was some stuff here, PC CD-ROMs, but no one, no one had budgets back then, right? So before that, like game composers and musicians like they didn't make any money for doing music because it was all like kind of stuff you do at the very end you were lucky to get five or ten thousand dollars or a project or something and and um and so you know a day in a studio is five thousand dollars in a professional studio so what i did was uh luckily for me I knew how to play a lot of different instruments, right? If not for that, I wouldn't have been able to create Terminator on the Sega CD because, you know, I would have had to have found a drummer and a bass player and a you know all this stuff. So, but what I did was I started doing everything myself out of more out of necessity because if I had the money, I probably would have hired a really kick-ass drummer, right? And so. Um, but samplers were just coming out at the time, and I had a Roland S50. Um, oh, yeah. And that, and that was the keyboard version, mm-hmm. but then the rack version was called the Roland S550 or something like that, right? The Roland S, yeah, S550. And that was like a two, was it? No, it, was a, it would have been a four-space rack. And you could take floppy disks and load them in yep. there and get... Oh, you could load in a whole drum kit. You could load in a whole bass. And, 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 you know, the harder you would hit down on the sample, the velocity, the harder it would pick on the string. So somebody painfully would go through and record all the different types, not just one note on a bass. They'd record it, loop it, and then play it back, but all of the dynamics. So all of this stuff was just, like, brand new at the time. And so... So for the drums, that really uh, that really helped me a lot because if you listen to the drums on Terminator, um, you know it's really hard to tell that that's not me at a drum kit because I didn't have a studio that would have a drum. I didn't have a drum kit. I didn't have a studio. I didn't have you know. So everything was done through samples. But I tell you, out of all of the stuff on the whole term, here you go. I'll, I'll explain that story in a sec. Um, <laughs> out of all of the, the the things and the tracks from Terminator, the thing that I spent the most time on ever was the drums. To get it just perfect, because you know you can tell when it's like a drum, uh, you know, like a a a. a, a like a drum machine, right? I mean, right. during the '80s, people use drum machines all the time, and um, so I literally painstakingly every single note hit, every every kick drum, every snare, every tom, every cymbal, and every little hi hat. I went through by hand on the entire album, so I easily probably spent six to eight weeks just 
on the drum stuff. Wow. And every note is exactly in place. But the thing when you're programming the drums like that, you can do it too clinically, right? And so when you put everything, when you quantize stuff and put everything exactly perfect, it doesn't sound right because humans are, you know, they're, they're a little imperfect, right? But there's always that, that live, like a good drummer will be on it. But, you know, but, but it's not a robot, right? And so, again, that's, I spent a lot of time on the velocity of the way, the, the hardness that everything was being hit, <coughs> but also just to, just to shuffle it a little bit, just to like go in there and say, okay, I'm going to take this one and just put it like 100 millimeters too soon. And this one, next one's going to be 100 millimeters too late. And then this one's going to be 75 and this one's going to be on, but then the next one's 75 too early. And just meticulously by hand, every single thing on that entire album was, was done like that, except for the guitar stuff. Um, but what a lot of people may not know uh, also about, um, about Terminator is that I'm actually, there's, there's two different types of guitars that are being used. There's the traditional, well, no, I, I'll say there's three. Sorry, there's there was three types, completely different forms of guitar on that album. There was the traditional guitar, which is a lot of what you hear like in the first track. But right, so that's like straight up. You know, guitar, bass, drums, freaking go for it. But a lot of the solos that that were played in there, I wanted a different, unique sound. So I had a JD eight a, a, a JD eight hundred, and and it was a great Roland synth that had this new kind of. It combined samples with analog with and you could really just tweak with all of the you know i mean it, it mike go go on google now and bring up a picture of like a jd 800 okay um yeah jd 800 because i want to show everybody all of the dials and switches that you get so it was truly like the first uh first meld of analog and digital together. Uh, here's Roland, a, yeah, here's a really good yeah, picture. Roland JD-800. And so what I had done was I wanted to create a sound that sounded analog and warm and crunchy and a little distorted in guitar, but that also had this kind of, um, I don't want to call it synthy, because when you say synthy, you think of like you know, 80s, 80s music. <laughs> right. Yeah. But, it, right. but, but just gritty. I want it to be like digital gritty, yeah. I guess would, would be go. the thing. Yeah. There it is there. Right. So, so every single one of those knobs and dials and buttons. I, and again, I probably spent two or three days just coming up and tweaking every one of those things and coming up with, with a, this kind of unique soloy, like just you know, just different sound. So a lot of the solos that you hear, and the guitar stuff, or some of the some of the guitar stuff, of the it comes from there. Is is that? It's not even a, a, a guitar. <laughs> and I just thought it would be cool to just create a different sound that no one had ever heard of. And then the third thing that was in there is that. Some of the guitar stuff that I did is actually impossible to play live. And so I would and it and it's not because of the the speed, but it's because of the way I did the harmonics and the scratching and the dives, the dive bombing. So all these kind of like Eddie Van Halen effect stuff. And so what I would do is I would I would record those. I would sample those. And so, so I, I mean, I guess it's kind of like an overdub, but I did it differently because I recorded it into the sampler so I could mess with it before 
printing it down on a, on a track. So, so it was a sampler. It was the JD 800 and it was the, um, and it was a live guitar through like a, just a Marshall. I had a, I had a 30th, I think it was a 30th anniversary Marshall stack. Uh, which is, you know, this was before Eddie Van Halen had done his 5150 right, right. Uh, heads and all that stuff. Because, you know, I, I went to that. But this was this was a 30th anniversary Marshall Marshall stack. Um, and I would go direct a lot. Um, so really, normally the way people would record guitar is, you know, they they put a microphone right uh, up on the ampli yeah. amplifier in a room they pad it off and then they threw like a sure a 57 microphone yep. in in front of it and then that's how you got the crunch but again because i was doing <laughs> like all this digital stuff and 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 midi stuff and and so many musicians like famous musicians would call me up because my name kind of started to get around as this guy who was making magic with like analog and digital together and and i was getting like newer sounds and bt brian transo who's like you know considered the godfather of trance and electronic music and he was at he was doing this stuff in like the late 80s in berkeley and i was doing my stuff in the early 90s and and uh we came together uh about three or four years ago we'd been friends for i don't know 30 years but because um, we were kind of doing along the same paths, but in different music genres, I was more like rock and orchestral and he was more electronic and trance. But for anyone who's who's interested in hearing just an absolutely mind blowing album, this project that me and uh, BT did where I was the producer of his album, it was called Electronic Opus and me and BT produced it together. It was it was his music, his greatest hits that I kind of helped to rearrange with him. And we added orchestra on top of it. So that's where you get electronic opus. And I got to tell you, it's probably some of my my favorite work. Mike, if you like Terminator and, and the melodies of it all, right? right. Because BT doesn't use guitars. And it's very rare, very, very rare. Um, but, but that kind of, but if you like the melodic style of my music and Terminator and stuff like that, check out BT's electronic opus because it's kind of both of us coming together. And, uh, again, mostly his music. I don't want to take credit for his music. I didn't write any of the music, but I helped to arrange and produce a lot of it. Um, so, you know, a lot of the kind of melody stuff goes in there through the symphony and counter melodies and stuff like that. But it was really, really amazing fun. Um, anyway, so yeah, so when I started working on it, I had to do everything. The bass, the drums, the guitar. So I told you I did the drums. I told you I did the guitar. Right, right. The keyboard was basically that, you know, that that uh, JD-800, all of the synth sounds that you hear like like in the song Metamorphosis. Um, that's that's me just playing with those knobs till. See that's and, 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 and Yeah, and, and again, let me, let me stress: I never went to school for music. I don't really know how to read music, <coughs> and so, and and I don't know what a damn single thing any of those faders mean. <laughs> 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 so I would just. I would just like mess around with stuff. To, I mean, I know a little bit. Like I know ADSR is right. attack, decay, you know, um, release and uh, wait, AD, attack, decay. Okay. Uh, S, is, S is um sustain, sustain, sustain and release. And so release, a, yeah, yeah, ADSR. Um, and I know MIDI really well, right? But I don't, all these things are just like whatever, you know? So I would just so, keep messing around until something sounded it's good. It, and it's funny that you mentioned MIDI. So believe it or not, let me tell you how prevalent MIDI is still. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, let me see if I can find a decent Yeah, I mean, MIDI, MIDI is, uh, you know, something that was created 40 years ago, It's but it, is, and it hasn't really changed. No, I mean, it's, and that's the beauty of it. It's not so and that's much... How, go ahead, go ahead. I was, 
I was going to say, that's how, that's the only reason I'm talking to you here today. Like, like without MIDI, I would have never have been able to program video game music. But what I did was, it was really interesting when I was first doing music, there were no like tools for composers and everything like that. Because again, back in the 80s, people just like, they program music by hand in a in in computer language like C++ and all this stuff and and that's why a lot of the who the hell is that oh i thought so, that was you on the right no 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 so i was that's what i was getting at so this is this is me in 2018 right so okay. my i have a i have a two person cover band call ourselves days of vinyl we okay. basically just cover you know everything 60s 70s 50s 60s 70s 80s today yeah. The reason you don't see a bass player and a keyboard, or yeah, you see a keyboard player, you oh, see a guitar you're player. Doing it. Yeah. So you, if you look on the top of my keyboard, there's a laptop there. Right. So most people, I, I've seen bands that they'll do karaoke stuff, like they'll bring a CD player and the CD will have all the background tracks and stuff. I, I we don't do that. What we do, and I'll pull up a let me pull up a second picture a little bit closer to me. No, nah, that one's not good. That one's in the sunlight. Um, yeah, you do this one. This one's a good one. So that laptop feeds into the USB port on that. Uh, that's a Yamaha M08. Mm-hmm. And then that feeds into the system. And so the MIDI data that comes off the laptop, the, the Yamaha basically produces all the rest of the sound, the drum kits. And what, what got me was I was walking through... Um, out here, it was um, Guitar Center, uh, when it was Guitar Center. And um, I had been wor- I'd been dragging around a big, large... I'm a Yamaha guy. I, I really love Yamaha pianos and, and digital pianos. So I've been you know, lugging around this giant um, P300, which is a great piano sound, but not great with the other sounds. And I walked, I walked to, through the, to the keyboard section... And I came across this M08, and on the on the the on the LCD display, it said Lucky. So I just walked over and I touched it. And I wish I, I that's the keyboard I'd, I wish I had had with me today, but it, it needs its own uh, amplification and stuff. So setting that up is a little bit different than dragging this over. But I hit it, and it gave me that sound from Lucky Man. That that. Emerson, Lake, and Palmer sound. Yeah, the LP, yeah. And so that's one of the songs that Wayne, my my guitar player, and I do with Days of Vinyl. So I went through and I started playing the solo to it. And I swear to God, I called him up and I said, Wayne, you got to get over here right now and and you have to see this. So he came over. I happen, I always have my stuff on a USB drive. I don't know why. It's on my keychain. Plugged it in loaded up the song and we ran through the song on this board and I bought the board the same day. So hmm. MIDI MIDI is how I actually do my music today. Um, you know, even now. So uh, on the side of my keyboard, which I do for both um, my synagogue choir, which I lead and, and I'm the temple musician and for just practicing that three and a half inch floppy goes right into this, right yeah. into this drive. And Back that's... that up, because those aren't reliable. <laughs> no, no, they're not. I have, I have of all of that. I have every MIDI of mine on OneDrive. Trust me. So, oh, yeah. but I. That's how. That's how. That's how I play, and that's how I have played for the better part of I think God Days of Vinyl. We started in two thousand and four. So us too. You know, seven, so almost seventeen years at it. Unfortunately, yeah, I mean, go ahead. I was going to say the way the way I accomplished writing music back then because there was no tools out there was, you know, I sat down with the programmers and I tr- I wanted to understand from them like like how do video games make sounds like how do these how does the Game Boy make a sound or the NES right and and they said well each system has a sound chip in it. Okay, and and there's limits to that particular sound chip for each of the machines. Okay, and how do you talk to that sound chip? 
and they said, well, you know, it's basically a paragraph of numbers. It's like, you know, right. asking. And, and I say, okay, what do the numbers mean? <laughs> like what, what, okay, a paragraph of numbers, I get it. But, but what, and they say, well, it's very simple. The first number is the note number. So, as you know, Mike, you know, there's 88 keys in a piano. And when you're talking about MIDI, the middle note C is note number. Oh, God. You're going to do a 44. In MIDI. It, it note 60. I, I didn't know. Okay. I didn't so, know that. I didn't yeah, know yeah. that. So, okay. I, I, so, I, yeah, I, I mean, so, you got to remember. You have to remember when I was, when I got into this, I yeah. was already using Cakewalk. So Cakewalk, Cakewalk no, had, yeah. had staff well, you and know it how had... I wrote all my music? Yeah, that, how? All, all of my music for Terminator and Earthworm Jim, every game you have in front was on Cakewalk 1.0. Nice. On DOS. Nice. <laughs> By the time I got to it, it was 3.0 and it was at least Windows 3.1. Right. I at least had a, a, a... You know, on the side, it had the, the piano key. So I could sit there and I could take a note, you know, and... And move it up, and as I moved it up, it would move up and down, and so I would. So, that's how I created my music. So the first number in the paragraph would be the note number, right? Right. Which which of these can... eighty eight keys is it? Right. Right. But it was it was always a usually because programmers talk in terms of you know like zero to one twenty seven, you know or you know, and so. Note 60 is middle C. This And then there was a comma. So so there was right. a note. What's the note? Then a comma. And then the next number would be how long was the duration of that number that you just triggered? And that would be a number between like 0 and 124. Right. 1,024, right? And so, but I had no idea what that meant. What what does what does a thousand mean? How long is that? I don't know. It's it's I'll right. tell you, it's longer than nine hundred and shorter than eleven hundred. You know, that's that's how long the, the and and then then the third number in the paragraph was the amount of space before the next note was hit. Okay. <laughs> And that's it. So you got, th so there was no velocity. This I'm going back before yes, Terminator. Yeah, gotcha. There was no velocity. There was a, there was the note number, how long, and then how long it was off until the next note came in. You can see where it, okay, <laughs> that insane. makes sense, right? It, right. But I can you imagine can, that takes forever for you to write something. Well, and so then I said, I said, are you are you guys nuts? Like there's no way I can, you know, because I don't even know what, any of those number what what you know i know what a rest is i know what a right. you know uh you know a, a four on the floor beats i can count that off i know what i know what 120 bpm sounds like on a metronome but what the hell's 642 <laughs> right. what how do i know and so what i but then i told them i said but wait a second there's this new thing called midi right and it wasn't that new. It was probably five or six years old at that point. But no one had ever really heard of it unless you were a keyboard player um, in, in the 80s. Uh, um, and so I says, well, look, you know, MIDI, that's what MIDI is. Like when you and there's these things called sequencer to just come out. Like it'd come out like a month earlier or something. And, and, and I said, so if, you know, MIDI is recording what you're playing on a keyboard and throwing it into numbers. I wonder if there's a way where I can play something on a keyboard. There it is. That dude. That's, that's the Cakewalk 5.0. That's 5.0. Oh, that's 5.0. Yeah. Oh, it looks just like 1.0 looked exactly like that. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is exactly what I would stare at. Can you go can you go into one of the tracks? So uh, uh, I I literally looked this up on you on a uh, uh, search. Hold on, let me see. Yeah, pu put in. Uh, put hang on, I might be able to. That. Dude, I'm about to get tears in my eyes. <laughs> I haven't seen that screen in 25, 25 years. 
Yeah, Holy this I, I'm not gonna lie. The this was before of me. Creativity and emotion. All right. just Hold on. Back in my head. Hold on. Let me but see. But that's for everyone watching. That's the uh, overview. Like that's all of the tracks. I, I want I you that. to go in though to one of the tracks where you can just see all of the numbers. Um. All right. So hold on. I'm looking to see. I'm looking to see if there's. I'm go literally into getting a, these events or something. I'm literally, I don't, this is not me. I'm literally getting these images off of, off of uh, Google. So I'm looking for, um, so let me do Cakewalk 5.0. Let me see. I'm going to go, while you're doing that, I'm going to really hit it quick. Uh, Cakewalk. I'm just going to put in Cakewalk, DOS. Uh, um, I'm just going to put that in and just see what comes back. Yeah, that's oh. what I just did too. I mean, this is, you're, oh you're my right. God. Yeah, well, like the phone systems, Greg Hendershot. This is stuff that well, by the time I got to by the time I got to Cakewalk, I was I was in Windows. So this this is as close as I think I got. This, this Yeah, I don't I don't see anything of the thing that I wanted to show people, but but this is crazy how I mean, this is how in the day you know? Yeah, but anyway, when the, the the thing I wanted to show folks is that if you went into like seed number two is synth base one, like when you went into that, that was and, like your track. But when you went in, it was just all the numbers and stuff. And so right and because on the I right, tweak. yeah, because on the right it's sit in and tweak every one of those numbers. Yeah, because on the right there it says the number of events, and that's how many that's how many notes, how many note events were in that track. Exactly. So synth brass one. Note three had four thousand nine hundred and thirty nine notes in it, and the stuff I was doing was breaking that shit. So like I would have to call <laughs> up twelve tones and say, "Hey, why isn't my stuff working?" It's like, well, because we didn't think anyone would ever do what you're doing, you know. And so they would make a revision, and then I got in Cakewalk two point oh had a whole bunch for DOS had a whole bunch of my revisions in it, which was amazing. So, but anyway, um, and so what I did was we wrote a program. The, the programmers wrote a, 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 a program for me that took these files, which are work files, .wrk, translated them to .mid files, then translated those to the ASCII files in the paragraph because they had to strip out a whole bunch of other information because you could do pitch bend, you could do velocity. There was all this other stuff, but all we wanted was the note, the, 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 the timing of it, and then the space in between. So they had to strip all this stuff out and then it would throw it into a, a, a paragraph of numbers. But that never, but, but that was a great start, but it never was because if I held down on a note for too long, it would crash the system because it could only go up to, to, to you know, 1,024. So, and that's why a lot of early video game music didn't have a lot of sustained notes. It was mm. always like, boo doot 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 bop 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 and what I was doing was I was holding down notes and then the, and then the system would crash, the sequencer would crash, or the game would crash. So I would have to go into the paragraph of numbers, which were, again, literally hundreds of thousands of numbers in paragraphs. And I'd go through and I'd go like, okay, where did I screw up? Oh, look at that. There's a value that's 2,046. And, and so it, that's why it crashed, because it got to that note, didn't know what the value of that number was, and crashed the whole system. So you had to be careful when you were writing music, and that's why there's a lot of staccato stuff as well. So in, if I wanted to do a long note, let's say I wanted to do da as like an undertone to a, to a, you know, a, a, a string sound or whatever, ba, you couldn't do that. That would crash the system. What you had to do was ba 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 to get that going. Because if you just held down, you were done. So 
Anyway, that's that's the crazy like Stone Age early mm -hmm. electronic <laughs> video game music. That's how it was done, and it was it was insanity. But but I loved it because no one else had this tool that I had. No one else was doing music, you know, like the way I was doing it. And so I had a little bit of a dis a little bit of an advantage. Because I wasn't a computer programmer, because everybody else was just typing those numbers in by hand and 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 you know kind of guessing. Hey, I'm taking a look at something because uh, Nick Nick sent me something to Discord. He said it might have um not quite. I'll show you what this is. Um, Geeks with I, cash. I, I'm doing a, I'm doing an interview. We're doing. A I live know. I Geeks know. Geeks with cash yeah. live interview. Geeks. Uh, uh, Tell, tell everybody in the chat when it's going to be. Is it is it Wednesday or Thursday of next week on Geeks with Cash channel? There you go. That looks familiar. Well, this is more. This is the ASCII. This is if you were looking yeah. at it in an ASCII way. Yeah. Uh, oh, here we go. Oh, wait a minute. Nope. Hang on. No, that's not it. So imagine I had to look at that and go, oh, yeah, I see what I did wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, I wouldn't. I I would have gone nuts. Yeah, there you go. Five p.m. Uh, pac is it Pacific Mountain? Okay, there okay. you go. Just just go on Geeks with Ch Cash's channel and oh yeah, most and, definitely uh, and, and subscribe. So, um, he's also a channel member, Mister Mister Nick. So you see the cool. little NLG thing by his name. Um, so, uh, the 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 advent. So we gra So you graduate then from. Terminator to Earthworm, Earthworm Jim. Jim. Yeah. So, which was did... a step backwards. Really? Because I had to do the, well, because I had to do the Genesis. I wrote all the music on the Genesis, on the right. Sega Genesis. And then we would port it over to the Super Nintendo. Um, and then we would do the Sega CD version later. So it started basic and then worked its way up because on the on the Genesis, you know, it was all FM synthesis. Right. And then on the Super Nintendo, I had two more channels, eight channels, and you could do samples. But I never liked the sound of the Super Nintendo. I, I always liked the Genesis, that beefier, thicker. There was FM. always. Yeah. And it was basically, yeah. you know, the chip. I don't know if you were aware, but, you know, the chip that was in the uh, the Sega Genesis was the same chip it was the yamaha dx7 basically in a little sega genesis mm -hmm. now mike if because you were around in the 80s i'm sure in, in all this stuff you probably remember a dx7 synthesizer back in the day brand new was like 1500 bucks 12 to 1500 bucks right but that the actual chip that made the sound on your what was the Genesis when they came out like 150 or 200 dollars or something bucks. 199 I think had one of those chips that was the sound chip so it was pretty crazy but um, but yeah Earthworm Jim so we worked on the Genesis first and then worked our way up and so how did so did you because a lot of what you do on the Sega CD is I'll show you here's the DX7. A lot of what you do on this on the Sega CD is, you know, synthesized, either sampled or, or you know, played. So I mean, obviously, you played the guitar, right? So you recorded. I can't the guitar. hear you. There's a DX7. <laughs> Isn't that thing beautiful? Is that you? What? Is that me? I don't hear anything. that music coming oh i don't know is it gone now i don't hear any music that might be mute that might be you it says your audio is yeah it says your audio is breaking up <laughs> it's not coming from me you no hold on Make sure I'm not playing anything in the background. <laughs> no, because you would you wouldn't be able to hear it unless I shared my uh, I don't Skype have any audio with you. Open. I got Skype open. <laughs> I don't have any windows open either, and I don't hear right. what you're hearing. <laughs> I swear I don't hear anything. Yeah. 
You guys in the chat, do you hear anything? Because I don't. <laughs> uh, I, can't get, I can't shut it off. What the hell's going on? <laughs> I don't hear it. I swear. Nick says they're not hearing anything in the chat either. Can you guys hear that? No. Not at all. <laughs> oh, you get your your hang on, your uh your your all your video is just going nuts here. Let me make sure there's nothing okay. in the chat. Did you find it? Am I back? You're back. Okay. <laughs> wow, yeah. Some stupid window I had open when I was searching <laughs> for uh when I was searching for um <laughs> when, I, when I did a search for the cakewalk thing and it went and I was looking on YouTube and then it and it went to the like the next video or something and started playing. Oh god. Anyway. All right. There you go. Okay, we're back. <laughs> to, oh, let me get your your camera kind of Oh, well so on. you know what I wanted to say was yeah. um I forgot what I was going to say. It just left my head in a second. I, I started thinking about it. So that's what the problem with my brain is I, I'm always thinking of four well, things at the same time. Yeah. And sometimes that, sh one of them shoots out the, the thing I was going to say. Dude, I, I've done that too. I've done I'll that think, too. So. There's something about Earthworm, Jim. Um, I'll think of it. All right. Oh, that's what I wanted to say. Sorry. <laughs> here's, the, here's the crazy thing about Earthworm, Jim. When, when, so what happened is this. I want to give you a little timeline here, and a lot of people may not yeah. know this. So after we worked on Aladdin, the, 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 the team, the, you know, which most of which are now at in television. But when we when when we stopped on Aladdin, they finished Aladdin, the team, the rest of the team left Virgin and they started Shiny Entertainment led by David Perry. And it was Mike Dietz and Nick Brody and Ed Schofield, all those guys. I stayed at Virgin still because, you know, they were just getting their offices set up and this and that. And I'm like, well, you know, like I can and, and you know, like I can still work at Virgin and and then do Earthworm Jim stuff on the weekends. Right. And because they didn't need me like right away from day one is they're looking for offices and setting up and, you know, having, you know, initial like they were creating the character earthworm jim and all that art they were in the art phase right and so i'm like well i'm gonna stay at, I'll, I'll stay at virgin then and get you know and get paid so that you guys don't have to you know because i never worked for shiny my idea was and the way me and david perry had, had set this up is he says look you know you can leave you know i was gonna leave virgin to start my own company and so, and he says, look, and then we'll give you the Earthworm Jim contract and blah, 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 and all this stuff. And I had every company was called EA wanted me to do the Madden football thing, which I ended up doing. Um, uh, they uh, Midway wanted me to do Mortal Kombat, which I did. Konami, Namco. I mean, every company was calling me up because I had won like best music of the year, or best audio of the year, like four years in a row. In fact, the year I left Virgin, uh, there were five nominees that year for music, and and I wrote four of them. <laughs> so I was, <laughs> I was, it was pretty funny. Uh, I was I was. You going, remember who the other one was? I don't know. <laughs> I don't. That poor bastard. Right. Uh, no, but um, but anyway, um, so 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 I started and I was I stayed at Virgin through like the whole summer, I, I didn't leave till like September. And I had done like 90% of Earthworm Jim already before I had left. And so I was afraid that I would have gotten in trouble by Virgin. Um, I said, geez, you know, maybe we shouldn't put my name in the credits for the original Earthworm Jim. Um, and they're like, well, should we just leave it blank? And I said, no. I said, uh, I said, the guy who's who took my music, 
from the Genesis version and who ported it to the Super Nintendo. This is for Earthworm Jim 1 because I did it for Jim 2. But in Jim 1, I paid a guy, and here's the funny story. His name was Mark Miller. Well, Mark Miller was the guy who did Toe Jam and Earl and who was a friend of mine. And so I said, Mark, what if we put your name, even though you didn't really you know, do, do the music or had nothing to do with the Genesis, we're going to put your name down you know, because he was my friend, we're going to put your name down in the Genesis Earthworm Jim 1. So the funny thing that people may not know or recognize is that my name isn't even in the credits. Well, no, it is for that, though, because I was gone from Virgin. It is from that. You'll see my name all over that. Yeah. Mm. But in the original Genesis, Sega Genesis Earthworm Jim 1 cartridge and the book, my name doesn't appear. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. No, no, not, not. Yeah, because I mean, you're right. You're right at the top of this. Sound yeah, and music yeah. effects. Tommy Tallarico yeah. Studios Inc. Additional arrangements by Mark Miller and Macau uh, Pedriana. So I mean, you're definitely at the top of the list for this. Yeah. Well, and because so here's the funny part though. The funny part was, so I leave Virgin. And, and I was still working with Virgin, though. I, I basically I went to the president and vice president of Virgin, who were dear friends of mine, and I told him the situation. And 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 I said, look, you know, I, you know, I, I set up my own company and this and that. And and I even I even spoke to Richard Branson about it, right? The the head honcho. And 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 because I'm like, these guys gave me my start, right? And and I and I really felt bad. About like, gosh, I'm leaving the company, but, but my idea, and, and they couldn't be more happier for me. They really couldn't. They said, look, we know you're, you're going to be doing major things. Of course you want to run your own company and we totally get it, but can we, we want you to still do music for us. So we'll hire your company. And I had like seven projects with them when I left Virgin. So when I left Virgin, and again, this is the 1994, um, I, I had two million dollars in contracts because I, 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 I got EA. I got I did a big deal with Playmates, which was the Earthworm Jim stuff. Again, it was Konami. It was Namco. It was Capcom. I, 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 I got them all. <laughs> right. And so I had all this amazing work and I and I, I moved my dad out. And he became my my money CFO guy. I moved some other friends out. Um, that uh, from the East Coast, I moved my brother out all of California because I'm starting this company. I wanted people around me who I loved and trusted. Right. Right. And so that's how we started. And but here's the funny part. Two months later, Earthworm Jim is now released. And I'm still going into Virgin, even though my office wasn't there, but I was still working on it. <laughs> and, but the music for Earthworm Jim was so good and, and again, keep in mind, I had done, at Virgin, I had done Aladdin, Cool Spot, Muhammad Ali, Global Gladiators, RoboCop Terminator. I had done a whole bunch of Sega Genesis games. And, and Michael, as you know, or anyone who knows back then, the sound that I would do with the samples, it was a very distinct sound. Oh, yeah. It, sound, it sounded a lot different and a lot higher quality production-wise and a lot better music writing and stuff than the average game that was coming out on the Sega Genesis at the time. So an Earthworm Jim comes out, and I'm sitting in the Virgin office, and they're like, <laughs> and, and everybody started playing Earthworm Jim because, you know, it was the team that everybody loved and knew, and ev- we were all friends. And so the, guy, the head guys at Virgin are like, busting my balls now. Exactly. <laughs> That it was me, and so that, and they come in and they go, "Huh, Mark Miller, huh?" <laughs> you know? And they're like, "They're like, who are you fooling?" I'm like, "Well, I didn't want to like get in trouble." They're like, "Dude, you just you could have just come to us. We would have let you put your name in the credit." I'm like, "Okay, well, I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to." Uh, so they I didn't put you in the, so they put you anyone. the CD version. And well, because I didn't want people to think I was at Virgin working on this stuff i was at my home on the weekend and at night 
I set up my own little studio in my home. So I just, again, I just didn't want Virgin to think like I was using their equipment or their time. That's why I didn't put my name in there. And they were like, dude, we know you only sleep three hours a day anyway. So you're like, you know, don't worry about it. But well, then we get to then we get to EWJ two, and I mean you're yeah. all over this book too. So yeah, um, and, you know you wrote Dad's tune, uh, piano, and this is what this is what fascinates me about you. And and well, I'm going to ask you about your your kind of younger music history in a minute. Yeah, piano, keyboards, guitars, percussion, etc. Tommy Tallarico, additional yeah. instrumentation, other yeah. people, accordion, holy it, yeah. accordion, Thomas V. Tallarico. Now yes. hold on. Okay. Yeah. So tell. All right. My so, middle name is not V. It's an A. I, I I know. So who is Tommy V. Tallarico? Yeah. So so Thomas <laughs> Vincent Tallarico is my father, and and so, wow. So so Italians, you know, when you grow up in a whole you know hundred percent Italian family. And any Italian who's in the chat will tell you this probably, but when okay, you're young, the first instrument, if you're Italian, that they put in your hand is an accordion. And really? so that is the Yeah, yeah. So so um so my dad was a ripping accordion player. His dad before him was an accordion and a trumpet player. Um I'm going to play this. You won't hear it, but I'm going to play it for the chat while we're play it. Sure, I, play it. I'm yeah. gonna play that's uh, that's um hang on that is uh dad's dad, and it, that's why it's called dad's tune that's a song that my dad wrote on the accordion back in the 60s and then he taught it to me on the accordion when I was a kid and so when I did Earthworm Jim I made it into a song and I had him play accordion on it that is insane that is awesome <laughs> and by the way Eddie Van Halen did something very similar on Diver Down his father was a clarinet player and so if you ever listen to um, a big bad Billy Sweet really now but and there's a ripping freaking clarinet on a Van Halen oh, album shoot. that's Eddie Van Halen's father Ah crap! It's a WMA. I forgot. I I didn't convert these to MP3 yet. I was go, still doing this. Go to uh, just go on. Uh, if you go on, uh, it'll be on YouTube. Just put in yep. Earthworm Jim Dad's tune. <laughs> yeah, I can actually download it. Um, I just can. Yeah. Le Pioneer so, is saying he's playing Earthworm Jim for the first time on his Evercade. Wow. Nice. Very nice. That's a yes, great... Yes, Randy Tyson, you are correct. He said, so Tommy's initials are tat. That's right. And uh, <laughs> tat, 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 tat. But, but so, the, the, the big joke in high school was, you ever hear the expression tit for tat? Yes. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, so music runs in your family. Let's, let's yes. we'll go there. Um, you know, many people, many people know this. Some people do not. I, yeah. I surprised my wife with this information earlier, but, um, you, uh, uh, you kind of especially know, um, a Steven Victor Tallarico, uh, who yes. people might know him by a slightly different name. Yeah, there he is. We're in widescreen mode. Uh, hold on, hold look, on. You're making uh, us look fat. Ah, sorry. Hold on. Stretch. Maximum. Uh, there we go. You might yeah, know. Yeah, you guys sure. might know him as Steven Tyler. So that's right. That is your I don't know. cousin. Do you see any resemblance there? Some people say yes. It's in my the wife. Some... My wife couldn't figure it out until I showed her this picture, and then she said, "Yeah, I kind of see it." She, yeah, she sees it. Yeah. So, um, so. Now, guys... I'll tell you the funny thing about this pick, uh, or wait, I mean, I have hundreds of them, but this particular one I think was taken, uh, I don't know, may maybe 20, 25 years ago. But, but the funny thing is this. So Stephen had come off stage. So we were backstage after the show when this was taken. And I'm, and, and so people always think when they think of Steven Tyler, you know, you always see him on stage and on TV. So how tall do people think Steven Tyler is? 5'9", 5'10"? Because, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a skinny, well-fit, you know, he, he's skinny right. as well, right? 
And, and keep in mind, he's 20 years older than me. So he's 73 years old right now. Can you imagine? And he still rocks and he's still amazing. Dude, and he's still young at heart. So many. See, this is what gives me hope. There are so many, um, you know, musicians and, and touring musicians that are still out there just kicking ass. And I yeah. you know, look, some some have had to, to retire. I was kind of sad to see Huey Lewis have to retire. But then to see like Steven Tyler and, and on the other end of the spectrum, Tom Jones. And these guys are in their late 70s and they are or early to late 70s. And they are still yeah. out there just knocking it out like night after night i it impresses me to a great extent totally but yeah you know my my wife always says when she looks at she says that we and especially this picture in, in particular she says she goes it's not like the looks as much as it is like the shape like like the like the the the, she says like the uh like like you have the same like forehead and jawline and yeah you kind of do eyes and the same cheekbones and you know but anyway the um so but the crazy thing is everyone thinks that you know steven tyler is very tall well i can tell you this he was wearing heels in that you know boots not heels you know right i got you right, right, boots right. that had like probably a at least a two or three inch heel I'm, and when people meet me and they've never met me in person before, they're always taken aback. And I, and I can always tell because they get this weird, the same like kind of like weird look on their face, like what? And the reason for that is, is because I'm, I'm short. And so people, because when they only see me on TV or they only see me on stage or they only see me on video, when they meet, they just assume that I'm like, you know, 5'8", five, 5'9", five, whatever. And, and so when they see me, they're like, you know, and, and the same is like, like Prince was like five, two, Tom Cruise is five, two, you know, like these are short guys, but you would never think that Tom Cruise is a smaller guy. Right. So, and, and so me, I'm five, five, right. So I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a short guy and Steven was in heels (laughs) and look at look at the size so right so man me and steven are about the same height actually because i was i think i was wearing sneakers or whatever too so but but that's one thing that everyone always freaks out about is like wait what because they they'll see this picture and they and they know me and they're like but wait were you standing on a chair or something i'm like no we were standing right next to each other so it's kind (laughs) of funny but um i'll tell you a funny steven tyler story though and while you're doing that, the yeah. other song that your dad did on the album was uh, the Moo Tango, didn't he? Because that's that's got accordion in it. No, that's the, no, that's, the polka tune. No, no, okay, that's Big Top Polka, polka which is also tune. which is also the Tarantella. Yes, and that's the whole. Well, well, there was La Tarantella, and then there was Finiculi Finicula. I come, right. I oh, you combine them together. All right, yeah. so hang on. I'm going to convert that one so that people can hear that one because I want people to hear how – I mean, you, I, I, I'm I, not kidding when I tell you I listen to this stuff on the regular. Okay. Um, in fact, you know, just uh, once again, not to, not to try to impress you, but – Tangerine. Uh, start from Jim. Got a good ear. Yeah, I I have. I'm telling you, I've worked on this. Um, so, so I, I, I want to tell two Steven Tyler stories, if I may. Maybe even three. Um, but I want I want people to understand how great Steven Tyler is. So when I, I've gone to Aerosmith shows my entire life, many many shows. I can't count um and one thing that i always see steven tyler do is you know we're usually like we'll be backstage before the show that's usually when we spend the you know the you spend you get a chance to spend the most time before the show not after the show a lot of times after the show if it's not a big party in in la or whatever you know they typically like leave but because they're exhausted um 
But here's what I want people to know about Steven is that, so me and him will be in a dressing room and people come in and, and hey, you got to do, let's do the meet and greet. And so, you know, you go into a room, it's usually about this size and, and there's, you know, 30, 40 people in the room. There are people who won radio contests or the Aerosmith fan club and this and that. And as soon as Steven walks in, you know, the room lights up. Everybody, ah! And and and, oh, and like you know, and and boom, and everybody just goes right to him. Steven, I'm your biggest fan. Oh my God, you know, Dream On was my wedding song, and I, right. blah, 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 on and on and on and on. Steven, 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 uh, can I sign this? Take a picture. Blah, 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 blah. And Steven does this. He goes, uh, and I've seen him do it, you know, whatever, 50 times. He says, uh, he goes, hey everyone, th thanks so much for coming. I'm really excited to meet everybody. Um, can you give me a couple minutes and I'll make sure we get pics and talk and do all this stuff. Give me a few minutes, okay? Yeah, yeah, sure, cool, cool. Thank you, Steven. And and what he does is he looks around the room and in every room, there's like two or three people sitting in the corner, typically introverts or just people who are just scared stiff because they're, they're like, their hero is just entered into the room and they can't even talk or breathe and nice. they're so shy and steven goes up to those people first oh that's cool and he goes hi i'm steven tyler what's your name and i have seen women i have seen grown men in their 50s <laughs> when he does that break they're shaking they break down and cry they hug him and he goes, give oh, me wow. a hug and everything. Men, women, I don't care who you are. And what that tells you is it's Steven Tyler is a guy who cares about people. It's not about him. He, and he understands who he is in the world, you know, and he doesn't have an ego about it, you know. And, and, and it's funny because, you know, sometimes you see Mike people will like ride me like they they like they when they try to like maybe tear me down or say negative things about me they'll say oh look at him going on all these stupid little retro channels that have 300 subs or a thousand subs and blah 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 like you know you've you've heard that mike mm -hmm. right i'm sure you might have seen some of that nastiness and i always think whenever i read that like they think they're like hurting my feelings or something. It actually brings me so much joy to know because I think of what Steven Tyler does, right? And again, not to put myself on the same level as him, not even freaking close. Not don't even, you know, but what I'm saying is No, I get what you're saying. You know, I I, I don't <laughs> there's a lot of people out there maybe who who are in my position who would never give an interview to somebody. Oh, well, how many subs do they have? Oh, they only have 40,000 subs. Well, I'm not going to waste my time. You know, um, I only want to talk, to, I only want to, talk to the pretty beautiful, popular people. Right. You know, and it's like, you know, I like having conversations. I like talking to people. I like making connections. I like making new friends who are interested in the same kind of stuff. I am. Yeah. So I don't, I don't view YouTube and social media as a means to get ahead and to brag and to blah, 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 blah. You know, I just view it as a means to communicate with like minded people. And uh, and so I don't mind going on, you know, Geeks with Cast channel and I don't not to single him out. But I, I don't know how many subs he has. He could have. 50,000 he could have 2,000 I don't even know he could have 50 I don't I don't I don't know and I don't care really right I mean because you know I just see a guy I see his content very cool hey let's have a discussion and he's really respectful of of you know keeping an open mind about everything and um you know so yeah so anyway that's that's my a, a big Steven Tyler story for you I'll tell you a funny one though so Steven's like not like a computer guy or anything like that, right? I mean, he's he knows his way around an iPhone and stuff, text and stuff. But um, I remember we were, we were having this conversation. He calls me up one day, and he's and he's like, 
somebody's like showing them Wikipedia for the first time. Right? <laughs> so, so, and 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 this was like this was maybe ten years ago. So Wikipedia was it wasn't new, but not everybody knew about it, right? So so somebody was showing it to him for the first time, and he calls me up. He goes, "Hey." Steven, uh, and I see it come in and I see Steven Tyler come in and your your heart skips a beat when that happens, right? Or when you get a text from him or whatever. And uh, he calls me, I, yo, Steven, yo. He goes, uh, he goes, hey, he goes, you know what this Wikipedia thing is? And I said, yeah, of course. <laughs> and he goes, yeah, well, okay. He goes, I'm on my Wikipedia page right now, meaning Stevens page. He goes, I'm on my Wikipedia page right now. I say, yeah. And he goes, and I'm looking down and all my things and this and that. And then in, 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 at the bottom, one of the things it says, like, like fun facts or whatever, it says that Steven Tyler is the cousin of famous video game <laughs> composer Tommy Tellerico. And I says, oh, that's... Awesome. That's very cool. He goes, yeah, no, 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 no. He goes, but I click your page and nowhere on your page does it say that your cousin's with me. And and it was it was so funny. And again, he's just busting my balls. It was, a, you know, right. it, was, it wasn't an ego thing. It was just, he's like, what the hell's going on? How come you don't have me on your page? And I know, I said, no, no, Stephen, I'm not the guy who makes the page. Just like you weren't <laughs> the guy who made your page. It's like a whole community of people and they just put all this stuff up and they have to reference it. Well, like, how come nobody has done that? And it was funny. And I, and I mentioned that. I, I retold that story in some interview and like the following day, it was funny because, you know, uh, they're like, oh, yeah, why isn't it on his page when it's on Steven Tyler's? It was funny. And, and so if you look, I don't know. I mean, they change Wikipedia all the time. I don't know if it's there or not. I'll go on one time and it'll be like, oh, wow, this is pretty accurate. And then like, you know, like a month later, I'm like, where did all that accurate stuff go? Because like, I'm listed a lot of times. I'm listed as Tommy V. Tellerico. That's like people think that's my middle name because in the credits, it said Tom Thomas V. Tellerico. And then somebody on Moby Games or something and, Mo, you know, like put Thomas V and then, the, oh, they must be Tommy V. It must be him. No, right. V is my dad. So so I'm, I'm miscredited in a lot of things because they because they, they say Tommy V. Tellerico or Thomas <laughs> V. Tellerico. Well, that's actually my dad from How Earthworm you, Jim. Right, right. Take a seat. <laughs> How did you get I, and this was funny, too. So, I, you know, I've seen other things that you've done. So I, I have watched your TED. You, you did a TED talk on on this subject and video games live and stuff like that. But I also saw on violence. Yeah. Video games, creativity and and the art, uh, video games. What the fuck? uh, Oh, art and disguise. Yes. Art and disguise. Video games, art and disguise. Which you, which is on YouTube. Um, and you watch, but also I watched, um, you know, I I used to watch parks and rec. So I know who Aziz Ansari is. He's he's one of the characters. (laughs) And somewhere I I came across this, he did a co- he did one of his comedy bits about you about, about I, me I think, and my website. Yes, about yeah, somebody his, like one of his one of his cousins or his nephew. No, or something no, it was like his that. brother. It was his, his little brother, brother, something like that. Right, and said, "Hey," I, it, and, and so he goes through this whole thing about about your website, and it's just cool where you get referenced and stuff like that. Yeah, it's really so, cool. I mean, a lot of people know Aziz Ansari. He's he's yeah. like a world class very famous comedian, television star, the whole thing. And, and, and so he did a whole skit. And if you go to my, if, if you go to my, uh, my YouTube channel, I have it up there. Do you? you okay. Do yeah. And, and, and the skit is based. So his younger oh, yeah, brother yeah, yeah, that's where it comes from. was a huge fan of mine. And, and, and he was telling the story about how when they went to India on vacation and there was like a big storm or something like that. And, 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 and they started going to Aziz's website because they knew he was his brother, but they were worried about his brother, not him. And they were, but they all came from Tellerico.com. He's like, (laughs) 
Where? Because I used to have message boards. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Yeah. I used to have pl- play a little bit of it. It's fun. Uh, let me see. Let me see if I can do. Can you that. play give the audio? Sec. Yeah. Let me give me a second here. Um, uh, let's see where it would show up. So I, I used to have message boards, and they were really popular. Like I would have like you know. <laughs> 40, 50,000 posts a month or whatever. It was crazy. It was a big, you know, fan base. And then this is before social media and all that stuff. Um, I don't hear it, but I don't either. All right. But anyway, people, well, people can go to people it. can go to it. Go to to- yeah. go to Tommy Tallarico's. Um, go to his YouTube page, and you'll see hey, that can you, there. Can you, wait, can you go back to that for a second, Mike? Yeah. Here, I'll, okay. I'll drop the image. I'm, I'm looking. I always like to, and so yeah. So like, so I always like to look at. Um, I always like to look at people's things. You know, like their things. So I see like Tommy Tellerico takes over in television. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, and then there's right. my, my my famous high heat baseball review with Vic. Um, what's the one above that though? What are you What are you googling? In, oh, on YouTube? Bitcast. So the big no, ca- it says I accidentally went on a gay date. It, it's a it's a comedy oh. spec. It's a comedy. It's I've seen. Oh it. it's oh, uh, Gar- oh, oh Barry you. Brewer. So Chocolate Sunday's comedy show. So He's this is so my funny. YouTube. This is my YouTube algorithm. It 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 hit when I go to search for comedy. It gives me other comedy things. I know. No, it's it's it's. I love yeah. it. It's oh the the oof sound and controversy. Dimitri yeah, Martin, yeah. who's very funny. Oh uh, wait! Uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, no, no, no! We're going right past that. No, we're no, going. But it wasn't them, though. It wasn't them. It was somebody. Oh, game test show. play. All right, we're not talking about that today. We're no. not talking. We are not Good talking point. about them today. Hannibal, today. Or gangsters ask questions. <laughs> this is hilarious. Oh, oh look, my Tommy ball. Tallarico diving catch for the Yankees. Yeah, yeah. You wait, never what? Saw that? No. You didn't notice? Yeah, this no. is me. I'm in left field. This is my younger days. This is in Yankee. This is in spring training. Are oh, you Are you kidding me? That that was a game winning catch in a that was on. Oh, let me get rid of this image. Hold on. That and, that's uh, you. That was, that was to win the game and to win the playoffs. And you see my team, my whole team. I was, I was number. Uh, yeah. Oh number my goodness. Seven. You you. That's me. See how short I am? Yes. See how short I am there a little bit. See, Holy like compared crap. to everybody else on the field. I have Play lear- it again. You got to see that again. I have learned something new about you today, sir. You know this? Yeah. Yep. Watch. Look Dave Bruce tries watch to hit one. Leap in the air. Uh, oh! Got yeah. it. Uh, and it was out of bounds, too. Uh, it would have been. It would have been. <laughs> might have been fun. But if, you can't is... hear it, but the the crowd goes wild, and the, and the announcer goes wild and everything. So That yeah. is That is outstanding. Oh, what else is all right? So now, what else is on your? <laughs> yeah, go to the. Uh, now we're going looking. Now we're going I gotta, hunting. I gotta, you, oh, you want to see a good one? Go down. There's a bungee jump down there on the right. Tommy Tellerico bungee jump in New Zealand. <laughs> Watch this one. Hold on, we're and it's we're going full. Eggs, so. We're going full so this screen. This is Shannon. This is my wife. Right. <laughs> so that that is a brave. Angle. That is a brave woman right there. No, no, that's me. Oh, okay. That's me doing it, but she's recording it. Oh, okay, she's recording. I was gonna say that is. Yeah, no, no, and you can hear her going, "Oh my god!" But, but the next angle is better. Uh, <laughs> I right, hold on a little. Oh, a little there we go. Bit. Okay, here you go. So that's me, right? That's what you hope they strap you in, right? Look at that. It's it's yeah. the second biggest bungee jump in new, in the world. You are nuts. Dude. Yeah. There you are. There yeah, go. there you She's are. Going to, to the camera. Hello. She's like, is okay. your insurance is your now insurance watch this. paid Would up? You do this. Watch this. This is a great angle. See ya. Woo! Yeah, <laughs> that's all. That's all you, man. You do you. <laughs> Look at how beautiful that is. That this is gorgeous is like too. The greatest. That is a, Is your insurance paid up? <laughs> she pushes. <laughs> and she pushes you off the ledge. <laughs> But you got you got to have wow. a set of you yeah, got to have yeah. a set of nuts. That is that to, is to that. jump off a wooden platform, three hundred feet, on rubber bands tied to your feet. That basically. that just ain't happening. But look at that beautiful. Look that, at is that. gorgeous. That is gorgeous. Oh, I love. I'm 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 gonna buy a place in New Zealand at some point. <laughs> what, else what else we got? And, and look at look at. Wait, hold on. Tell me if I have haters or not. Seven people downvoted that. <laughs> <laughs> How 
dare you do bungee jump? How jumping? dare you bungee jump? Oh my gosh. Oh, let's see. Is there anything else? You did it, MTV see... Cribs? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they two were in my house. <laughs> well, that first video, check it out, 1970, that one on the left. If you want to talk about music stuff, this is me when I was two years old. And But watch, so again, I was always playing instruments. So, you'll, there's, so there's nice. a piano. You know, it was a little piano, but I would, you know, that's, I would jam on the keys. That's how I got started. Now I was just showing off. I was, you know, but always the ham though, right? Always, right. always had to be the center of attention. Oh, somebody's looking at me. I'll dance. <laughs> that is awesome. That's me with two. Oh my goodness. And then, uh, that's just, that's me and my dad, uh, going sledding. Got the side those 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 late sixty early seventy sideburns. You, you know, yeah. you, you loved Elvis, could you tell? You know, <laughs> I have a better video of this too. It's crappy. I, I have the, I have a restored version of this. I have to put up because this looks like crap. What is he's beating you with a golf club. <laughs> no, he had a little hockey stick. <laughs> and then this is me for Christmas. So this was my, I was, I was just, almost turning three. So I would have been three in a couple months because I was born in February and this would have been December. And so, uh, again, I was always into the music thing. So this is me opening my uh, uh, my drums. Oh, it was a snare. So I had a piano. A guitar, <laughs> Look at you go. <laughs> yeah, wow. I mean, for two years old, I mean, I was already like that's and, dude, and it was got... funny. My mom always tells the story. She's Good. like. Good the second you open that, at that moment, I thought to myself, why the hell did I buy him a drum? <laughs> <laughs> yes, as all parents do. Because it was so Dude, loud. your stick form was even good back then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was, I was into it. And then, uh, and then this, is my, this is my third birthday. So this is a couple months later, and they got me a little, you know, one of those little guitars. So this is me playing... But wow. you know, this is you, you're around it though, right? And you and you, you just like that. That was the way I was playing the guitar. I was holding it with the wrong hand and playing it upside down. <laughs> Eventually, I got better. Don't worry. But anyway, so yeah, that's, it's just uh, oh, it's very some, cute. Some of my music stuff there. That's awesome, <laughs> man. See, that's that's the that's the Tommy that that um, you know I've always wanted to hear about, and know about it. In fact, um, this. Uh, uh, who was it? Um, so Randy Tyson actually asked about your relationship with your family. He said, I know okay. you talked about how you went to California to pursue your career. Was there any yeah. bad blood between your family? Did it change when you came back home successful? No, no, not at all. It was, it was the exact opposite. I mean, so, you know, Italian families are very, very tight and I'm the young, uh, I'm the oldest. So I'm the oldest son. Uh, so there was me. Oh, so and you're the, the, the the son. Yeah, exactly. I was, and if you, you know, just watch the Godfather, you'll yeah, know I'm, right, I'm right. sunny. Uh, no, but, but there's, uh, and my brother's name's Michael. So there you know, Michael Corleone, he was the youngest. Right. Um, so, uh, so there was me, the oldest born in 68. My sister Karen was born in 72. And then my brother Mike was born in 75. So there was, you know, there was seven years between me and my brother, more like six, because he was in November, now it's February. But um, so being the oldest and a son in an Italian family is like a responsibility. And uh, but so when I left, like my parents were crying on the doorstep and my mom mm. was kind of like more afraid and she didn't want me to go because I mean, she wanted me to she was just very she was concerned because here I am you know, 20 years old, I'm going to just going to get my car and drive no place to stay, no money, no friends, no job, no plan. Like imagine anyone, right? Imagine your kid, Mike, if you know, one of your children that said, you know, yeah, I'm just going to go to this strange place and, and don't worry, you know? So she obviously, you know, she was, uh, she was very concerned. And whereas my dad, who was a very positive thinker. I learned all of my, like if you met my dad uh, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, he's, it's just like me. You'd think like, oh, that's 
where Tommy gets all his hand movements and, and you know, all that, his, his passion and all that stuff, you know, is from my dad. I, you know, it's like, I got the business and, uh, business and passion stuff from my dad, but all of my, uh, compassion and, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, more family stuff from my mom. So it was, it was a perfect balance, but, um, my, my, my passion, my, my compassion and spiritual side comes from my mom and my business and, uh, you know, cause it's passion weaved in all of it. But anyway, so, but no, they were, they were really supportive, but scared. And, and so, yeah, so when I went out to California, um, I, I never told them I was homeless. I, I lied to them. I, I said that, uh, like, cause again, I back then, you know, late eighties, early nineties, there's no cell phone. So I'm, I'm calling them with like spare change. And I remember like I ran out of time and, and you know, like, and then they would call me collect on the, they would call me collect on the phone. So I had to read off the phone number and the pay phone. People my age will remember that back in the day, right? The younger folks be like, what the hell are you talking about? But that was like a, a thing. I'd have to call my parents with like a di- and it was a dime back then. <laughs> right, it was a dime. I rem- I was old enough to remember that. Right? Before and, and again, yep. having no money, you know, I would I would go to the pay phones and I'd, you know, click the thing and look for open change. I think a couple times I got I got I, a few cents. I, I used what, to call people collect a lot. <laughs> yeah. That's what you do. You call your parents yep. with the first dime, you get like 2 minutes and you read off the number on the pay phone and then you just wait for them to collect call you back you know or call or call you back i mean so but yes you could make a collect call just t- call the operators yep so so they were very proud of but i never told them i was homeless god my mother would freak um i only told them till much later in fact the way they found out about it is they saw one of my interviews they're like you are homeless i, I my dad knew <laughs> later but my wow. i never told my mom and then, and then, yeah, and then so, and they, they both just turned 80. They're, they're two weeks apart. They turned 80 uh, in January. Um, and and my mom and dad were like the people who played in television with me growing up. Like it was a family thing. My mom loved skiing. My dad loved baseball. Me and my brother would play hockey and utopia and math fun and we had all these we'd always play so many games so when i think of in television i think of that and my dad and my mom and i can't wait like for me being able to play games with my parents you know again because the last you know the last time i played a video game with my dad was 1982 and the la- last time i played with my mom was we played we bowling uh, you know, in 2006 or whatever. So that's been 15 years. So it, last, it would be fun. It last means time a lot I think, to me. Last time I think I played a game with my mother. So my mother is one of the few people. We had a ColecoVision. Um, after the Intellivision, we went from Intellivision to ColecoVision. My dad worked yeah. for a toy company, um, a toy store. So he would bring these things home for us. Yeah. And my mother, who didn't really do... I mean, she did a little bit of gaming, but... Her favorite game on the ColecoVision was Ladybug. And oh, I have a picture of her somewhere in our photo album of her flipping. We sent it to uh, to uh, Coleco because we wanted because she flipped the score on Ladybug and I oh, I was man. amazed. And so every once in a while we'll break that out and do that. So I'm very keen to to do that too. Um, so I, I know where you're, I know, I know that feeling. DJ C said that him and his dad would play Astro Stash and him and his mom would play bowling. I, my, that was another one. Yeah. Me and my mom would play bowling too, as well. And I noticed, uh, uh, that in the back, when you do your DJs, uh, C game studios, I noticed you have that, that bowling thing. Now I know why, because, Bo- you love bowling oh, because awesome. you used to play with your mom, I bet. And uh, yeah, I like uh, Corge J- Games says, yeah, he remembers he'd call his house and let it ring twice and then call again. Yeah, that, that was like the code. Like, right. Yeah. 
if it rings once or twice and then hang up, yeah, so you didn't have to pay. That was the code. <laughs> Come and get me. That's right. That was great. That's funny. No. Totally true. Uh, so, move, um, let me see if there's anything else. It's um, so well, obviously what you know uh somebody had asked what inspired you to get into music obviously you've been into music since you were a baby so i think that's it i mean the thing that inspired me i'll tell you looking at those videos that we just showed right when you're that young your parents are everything in your entire world right there's there's nothing else that that exists right when you're three four you know this is before you even start watching goofy tv shows or whatever but and so the and you you could see me on those film right where i knew that like if i was i would perform whether it was the drums bashing on a piano Flipping doing around, guitar right. dancing around my parents would would laugh i was entertaining them and they thought it was the cutest adorable thing right and and then they would bring the neighbors over or when my aunts and uncles would come over, they're like, Tommy, Tommy, do your dance. Do, do your piano. Do your <laughs> Jerry Lewis thing. And I, dun, 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 you shake my nerves and you rattle my brain. You know, it's before I even barely know how to talk, but I would pretend like I was Jerry Lee Lewis or Elvis with the, you know, and I'd get the leg kick and the hips swiveling and, the, As... and everything. They just thought it was the funniest thing. And it was, right? And so, so why did I get into music? Because... For me, it was my parents. I was I was getting the two people who are my entire world. You know, they loved that that I did that, and I wanted to impress and you know uh, impress my parents and and perform for my parents. So that's really what got me into it. And of course, then when I got older, um, you know, it was Jerry Lee and Elvis Presley on piano, yep. and then. Godfather came out in 1972 and my dad would get the Godfather soundtrack on vinyl and I think yeah I, I th I'm pretty sure he had an eight track of it in his car and so da 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 yeah <laughs> right and so I, that's when I picked up guitar even though it was a mandolin in the movie but right. I didn't know that and so I asked for a a real guitar not the little toy thing you saw me but but uh, I asked for a guitar and then so I that's what I learned I learned the Godfather again to impress my dad because he would hum it all the time and then uh and then in 1978 Van Halen one comes out the album and that you know, just blew my mind. And, and then of course, 1976, Rocky came out, 77, Star Wars comes out. And so to hear that music, that's what got me oh, into orchestral yeah. music. All while this time, I'm going to the Boston Gardens to see Steven Tyler perform the 30,000 people. So between the ages of like five, six, like from 1975, six, seven, 78, those like four years, I'm playing guitar because of Godfather Acoustic and then Eddie Van Halen. I'm playing piano like crazy because that was my first instrument and I'm a big Jerry Lee Lewis fan and Elvis. And then Rocky and, and Star Wars comes out, so that music. I yeah. heard Beethoven for the first time, so wow. that music. And then I'm going to see Cousin Steven, boom, and, oh, you know, so music. So... I guess the better question would be, what else could I have possibly done? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like right. You the, were surrounded by it too. It was surrounded, and I was so passionate about it that it was like, you know, that was going to be my destiny no matter what. You know. John, and and it's funny you mentioned Star Wars and John Williams, you know, because John Williams, he's his he also iconic stuff that yeah. that pushed me in that direction too. Also, by the way, fun fact, you know, as I told you about Mario being all in C, almost everything John Williams does is in, because it's all concert B-flat, but all of that stuff too, you know? Yeah. But you go from yeah. Star Wars to, to Raiders of the Lost Ark, Raiders, even to, to Superman, E.T. Now, all that question stuff. For you, Mike, I, here's a trivia question for you. I don't know if you knew this or not. Oh, you might have if you were listening to uh, Stuart's 
uh, thing. I, but, I caught the first hour. Okay, I, I don't know if I did it in the first hour, so you might already know this, but for it, for folks in the uh, uh, chat, they might not. Um, so did you know that John Williams, so Jaws, it was like one of his, that was like his big breakout, right? And that was 1975, I believe, 74. Um, but did you know what John Williams did in the 60s TV show, which everybody knows the theme of? Uh, I used to know this. I don't remember. I don't remember. John Williams, or as he was known then, Johnny Williams, did uh, he did Gilligan's Island. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. And it's in C. Yeah. Nice. You're good, man. You got a great ear. Yeah, that's uh, all in C. I would not have been able to I would not <laughs> have been able to uh to pull that out. I I, I it's my so that like quickly. You did so, that you did that quick. So Cause, like cause you, Well like you impressive. I can do it by ear, but yeah. if you stick music in front of me, it takes me a while to read. I can read music, but I am not proficient. Like I know people I can yeah. I can put you know, Chopin down in front of them and they just, you know, they just go yeah, nuts. Yeah. And, yeah. No, I, and, and, and those people, those people bug me. <laughs> but if you give me, if you give me a piece of, of music to listen to, um, you know, like uh, one of the, so, you know, getting back to the video game music stuff, there is some music out there. So you get past Mario and you get into some of the other kind of orchestral music that I love. And mm -hmm. so, for example, I'll give you, um, you know, Zelda. Zelda. And I love that. How about Act Razor, too? Act Razor is another one. Around that a same time. At that yeah. time. Another one that I've really gotten into Thanks. lately, and it's an easy song to play, is um, I, I had never been a, a Nintendo guy. I was always a Sega guy. Yeah, so, me too. So... It it was it wasn't until Bloodlines that I got into Castlevania, yeah. But then when I went back and I started to listen to Castlevania, and it's got this really cool. Yeah. And I, and rhythm is a big thing for me. So when you were talking, and about... that was done by Kanuyu Yamashita. Yes. And she was seventeen years old when she wrote that, and. And so she's a woman, a young young lady at that point, young young girl, Japanese woman. That's unheard of. Yeah. So, and when you were talking about earlier, when you were talking about moving music around in the Terminator using Cakewalk and stuff, the term that came to mind to me as you were talking about moving things in in um you know millimeters or not millimeters but you know in hundreds of beats and stuff like that is yeah. staying in the pocket and a song like that where that beginning is is in a it, it it takes that you know one two three four and just blows it out of the water and makes you stay in it but it but you can float around so easily um, but, and what she did when, because she's a good, dear friend of mine, and, and she actually lives in New Jersey now, believe it or not. Oh, really? She moved from Japan. Yeah, she got married to an American, and uh, a great guy, and and, uh, and they're in, yeah, they live in New Jersey now. So, so whenever I play in the New Jersey area, she always comes out, and our big opening, ladies and gentlemen, bam, bam, boys and girls, bam, bam. And for these shows, she's on pipe organ. Oh. Please, please oh, welcome yeah, the right. composer of Castlevania, Kanuyu Yamashita. Ba -da -ba -da. And we go yeah. into like, the orchestra and the lights and everything. And oh, the man. Crowd I, wild. I didn't even uh, hold on a second. I didn't even think about that with a bait with a within the bass. Yeah. Oh, that's wow. How you play. That's how you play it. Oh, wow. That's how you play it. Not on the piano. Right? That's the yeah. song. Yeah. And th that middle part just blows me away, too, that she did. That 
stuff because that gets gets you towards you know the the uh, the you know that's where that I get that it's for yeah I, I I hear it in there. Well, going back to my personal uh, YouTube page, there's a video on there that shows me. Um, they th- all the Japanese composers in 2007 threw a big welcoming party for me because I was coming nice. to Japan, and you know just on I was there uh, because we were going to be playing video games live later, but but we were there to have the meetings um, for the first time because we were with we we played during. Um, What's the big uh, Japanese game convention over there called? Tokyo uh, Game Show. What Tokyo is it called? Game, Tokyo Game Show. Tokyo Game Show. Yeah, TGS. TGS. Um, and so we were playing TGS, so we were meeting with the TGS people, but all of the Japanese composers threw a big party for me. I mean, everyone is there. Everyone is there. The only, like from, uh, you know, Yuzo Koshiro, um, you know the guy who did, you know, uh, Eco and Shadow of the Colossus and 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 Silent Hill and and you know uh, 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 people who did Pac Man and Ridge Racer and 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 everyone is there. Uh, use uh, Yashi um, Mitsuda San uh, uh, was there. Um, uh, the both Castlevania women are there. People don't realize this. So Kanuyu Yamashita did the first one, but she only did the first game. And then another female Japanese composer took over, and she did, you know, all of the iconic stuff too. So all of those people are there. The woman who did Kingdom Hearts and Street Fighter, and you'll just you'll have to you'll have to see it. And and so it's a video of me going through the entire room and them talking to me and everything. The only two people who weren't there were uh were koji kondo and uh uh, nobu uamatsu and the reason why was that uh uh, koji san lived like an hour train ride away and i had had dinner with him the night before because he wanted to you know take me out or whatever because he couldn't make the party and he felt really bad because he had to get home and he had to take the train something about the train didn't go that late or whatever Um, and so, so he wasn't at that in the video, but I did the night before. And then the night after, um, I had dinner with, uh, Uematsu-san because, uh, because he was out of town and he was just getting in and he was so bummed he couldn't make it. But literally all the Japanese royalty was there. And so check out that video as well. I will. So Kenji Kondo is a a funny story too, because, uh, recently, um, so, you know, even though we're all on, uh, you know, with COVID, so as I mentioned earlier, I'm the I'm my I'm my synagogue's music director and choir yeah. director. So the funny thing is, I bring this I bring this piano over on Friday nights now, and this is how I'm set up because we do our services on Zoom, and okay. so oh really? Still? Yeah, we do. We're still doing it on Zoom. So I end up playing. And and doing all the music and stuff like that, and then I'll I'll mute myself when I'm done so that the rabbi can get back to what he's doing, and, and he says, "Okay, Mike, it's time to do this," and I'll go. So there is, but sometimes I'll play over top of him doing something. And there's a, um, you know, at at the end of our service, we we say a prayer for mourning for for folks who have passed away and and their their anniversary of their passing. And I've always played, you know, kind of some very light um, kind of soft music to to do that with and and I kind of got tired of playing the same thing all the time so one day out of the blue I just started just started playing which if you if you're familiar with it it's it's a very famous piece that he did Let me get to the, so then you hear. Think of Mario. Someone in the chat's gotta know this. 
So I'm playing this, and it's beautiful. People are like, wow, that's really nice. Somebody finally, some young kid finally hits me up in chat and goes, are you playing Dire Dire Docks from Super Mario 64? <laughs> I said, I don't know that. Yeah, one. no, that's the that's the. So in Super Mario sixty four, when he goes into the water, and the whole there's a whole level in the say, water. It's, not, it's, yeah. it's called it's called Dire Dire Docks, and that's the song that he did for that. It's so different than you know everything else he does. Somebody picked up on it finally. Said, "Are you doing that?" And, and, and so I even take this stuff and I put it into. Uh, you know, into practice in my normal life. That is how lovely. The the next one that I'm working on that um I'm I'm gonna put somewhere in and I don't know where is you know I'm a big so my 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 musical um love when it comes to video game music is in the Sega CD. It's in a lot of Genesis stuff, but it's in the Sega CD. It's in the Sega Saturn. It's in the PlayStation One. It's in the Dreamcast and. You know Nights in the Dreams, right? Yeah. This is the next one I'm working on. This is that the theme song to that to that game. And it's got words and stuff, so I can't really sing the words while I'm doing it, but I'm trying to figure out where to put this, and I'm going to put it somewhere in our service. But it's just so, like, this kind of music is just, it. there's a, there's a, there's orchestral pieces, there's, it, it got to the point where, you know, back then graphics were not the big thing, because you're in 16-bit, you're in, in 32-bit, so you had to make it up in music. That's what made guys like you so important to the industry is because you had to sell your game on if you couldn't sell it on graphics it better have a damn nice soundtrack behind it you know so these are and again i just because i haven't gigged in a year with my with my guitar player and we haven't gone out and actually done you know the pop stuff that i usually do i've i've relegated myself to learning video game music all day <laughs> so um uh, let's see. Um, there was somebody else that had. All right. So, um, born distracted. Who I hope he's still in the chat. He asked me really early on to ask you. Do you have a funny story about getting a sudden moment of inspiration to create an original tune for yourself? Nah, uh, not really funny or interesting. No, because. Well, like when I when I sit down to write, I just play the game with no sound, and I just wait for stuff to enter my head. Like I got, like I just I start like, what would I want this to sound like? And I just kind of you know mess around with stuff in my in my brain, and then when I'm like, and then I can start to like envision something to go. Oh my God! This sounds so great. Like, like even with Astro Smash, like you, you know, you heard the uh, oh yeah coming exclusively on the Intellivision. <laughs> Amico. We, haven't a, we haven't done an Amico thing in a while. I was uh, gonna. That's I have I have Amico questions for you, music related. But, uh, but yeah, but like even like Astro Smash, I'm sitting there playing the game with no sound, and it's like, what would be the most epic thing to hear ever? You know, and. Uh, and that's how I write music. You know, I just wait for it to come. And then sometimes you'll be humming something. And I'm like, nah, that sucks. Throw that out. And then I try it again. Nah, that blows. So so part of being a composer, I think, and songwriter is knowing what's not good, too. <laughs> you know, not only knowing what's good. Because some, some folks, like, they'll get something in their head. And they're like, oh, man, I got to keep working on this or, or, or it's kind of like mediocre. I throw all the mediocre ideas out. That's that's how I, you know, I, you know, how, yeah, how much mediocre is gone. How much stuff how much stuff is on your cutting room floor, so to speak? I mean, how I mean, really, how much music have you nothing, thrown away? No, nothing. The only the only stuff that's on the cutting room floor would be games that got canceled that other people never heard because the game got canceled. Like, I'll give you an example. Um, I did a Felix the Cat game, okay? And 
we did the entire soundtrack as a big band swing album because Felix the Cat, like, yeah, 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 yeah. and it was awesome. And uh, and the game never came out, so I have the so I have like that on my hard drive. Um, Another game that was that I was working on with Capcom, and it was the early two thousands, I believe. It was a game called Major Damage, and he was kind of like a. It, it was kind of like The Incredibles, like he's this comic book character that's bigger than life, but kind of funny with a big jaw and big muscles. Um, and we had done a whole bunch of music for that, and. One of the funniest things I did was, um, is we did a, the, the intro tune. We wanted it to kind of sound like the original Wonder Woman from the 70s. Wonder Woman yeah. and the power she possessed. You know, the old, um, right. uh, what's her name? The actress? Uh, Linda Carter. How do you forget Linda Carter? Thank you. Yes. Because uh, I had a poster of her. Uh, you know, who you had didn't? it. Who didn't? Who had that poster? I might still have it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I had. Well, well. I, let me see if you had the same posters I did. So the posters I did, I had, I had Wonder Woman. I did have Wonder and Woman. And then I had the Farrah Fawcett. Oh, of course. And I had Catherine Bach. Did not have Catherine Bach. I wanted one. That was that was uh, Daisy that was Duke. The, uh, yep. Uh, uh, the uh, you know the Daisy Dukes. Yep. From uh, Dukes of Hazard, and then I don't know how many people remember this one, Heather Thomas. Do you remember Heather Thomas from, from the eighties? Uh, uh, she was uh, like Heather Locklear. What was she in? She wasn't Charlie's uh, Angels. I, I don't. What? What, what Heather is she? Thomas. Heather, Heather Thomas. Hold on. Thomas poster. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Was she on TV or maybe she was just. Maybe it was just a poster. I don't she know. Was a, she was in the Fall Guy. That's what she was in. Oh, Fall Guy. I see. Yeah, yeah, she was in the Fall yeah. Guy. Yes, yeah, so I was in love with Heather Thomas. Oh, she was in T.J. Hooker too. T.J. Hooker. No, or no, wasn't that? Uh, that was no, Heather she, Locklear. No, wasn't according it? to this, according to uh, well, yeah. Google never lies, right? Never. <laughs> so. Now, apparently, according to this, she was in. Yeah. She was in an well, episode was, of The Love was Boat. Was Heather Locklear in a 70s cop Heather, TV show? Heather Locklear was on Charlie's Angels. Yeah, yeah, I know. But after that, did, didn't... No, no. Uh, Heather Locklear wasn't in Charlie's Angels. Well, who was she in? What was she in? What am I... Um, uh, uh, T.J. Hooker. No, that was Heather Thomas. Somewhere. Hold on. I'm, I'm looking... Hold on. I got her IMDb up. All right, so Heather Locklear was... Melrose Farrah Place. Fawcett was was Farrah Fawcett Charlie. was Charlie's Angels. That's right. Um, she was Heather. Locklear. Oh, she was in TJ. Okay, so they were both in TJ Hooker. Ah, Could, see there you go. I knew all right, you were right. You were right. You're right. Fantasy Island. No, she was in one episode of Fantasy Island. Welcome to Fantasy Island. There's a show they need to bring what a back. Great show. Oh, hey, she was in. She was hey. in Dynasty. Heather Locklear. She was in Dynasty yeah. when they rebate when they uh she was Sammy Joe. Sammy, Do- Sammy, Sammy Joe Dean. DJC Game Studio says, we want to, can we confirm Dukes of Hazard racing for Amico featuring Catherine Bach? <laughs> uh, unfortunately, we can't because we would get canceled. Right. Because, you because can't do that the, car uh, anymore. Yeah. Because the uh, the Confederate flag's on the top of Dukes of Hazard and we can't watch that anymore. Yeah, you you know what's allowed. funny? John Schneider. So John Schneider was, you know, Bo Duke, right? Yep. And he's a very good friend of mine. And and he's been to video games, live shows. And we met in Australia, actually, because we were both guests at a big comic convention. And we were like the guest stars of like, there was like seven or eight of us, you know, like TV stars, because our show aired in in Australia and was, you know, popular. The TV show and the, and the video game guy and this and that. And we hung out in Australia. Him, it was him and his wife, and and it was just a great time. And then we became friends, and we came back. We'd hang out in his Hollywood. Uh, he had a, he had a great place uh, up north of Hollywood in the hills, and uh, and he has a Dukes of Hazard. He has the General Lee full oh, nice. on. It is epic, and he's got a great 
a great YouTube channel. If you, I mean, he does. He's he's a he's a, a, a politics a little, um, a little bit. And he's, he's a you know staunch conservative and Republican. So if you're not yep. into that, you might not uh, you know want to hear any of his political stuff. But he does talk a lot about um, he does talk a lot about Dukes of Hazard and the car and and uh, he's really great. Such a great talented guy. And of course, a lot of people who might not remember Dukes of Hazard may know him from uh, Smallville because he was the dad in Small. Oh, was he? So, I that's oh yeah. Now that I. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, wow. and, and so when together. when we were doing video games live, you know, like everybody knew him as the dad from Smallville, and and he would he was gracious. He'd come and do the red carpet, and him and his son was in the video games, and his wife would come, and so yeah, it was cool. All the stars that used to come to video games live how early you, on, we, uh, we played how, like the Hollywood Bowl. I mean, I had you, Gary Coleman was there. Uh, we had Elijah Wood, Stan Lee. I mean, we had a cavalcade of stars. Is that the is that the one you gave me the uh, ticket that you sent me the ticket for? Was that yeah, it? yeah, that was that was the first show. Yeah, hang on, at the hang, hang on a second. Got I it? Yeah, I sent over. you that. Hold on, give me one second. I sent you a copy of it. Let me let me read through the. Uh, what do we got? Oh, there's Papa Pete. Heather Thomas was in Zapped with Scott Baio. Oh my God, Willie Ames. There's a name. You haven't heard in a long time. Willie Ames was from uh, was from uh, Eight Is Enough too, wasn't he? Wasn't he in Eight Is Enough? Yeah. Willie Ames. Oh, let's see. There so it is. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's a replica of our first Hollywood yeah. Bowl ticket. And you signed it, which I. Oh, DJC met yeah. John. Yeah, that's what he Leave said. The roof orange. The zero one is good <laughs> for me. There you go. Oh. Yeah, I got a couple that like I was very ha- I was very uh, I show this to everybody. My signed Tom I signed Tommy Tallarico Earthworm Jim. Yeah, yeah. So this is my this is my good collection. What um what how did how did you get video games live started? What 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 got where did how did that inspiration come from? That, yeah, I you know, a lot of that. people on that web on my old website Tellerico dot com. I mean, it's still it's a new website now. It's new looks different but but that website the old one with the message boards and everything um a lot of people would always contact me and say what when are you going to do a concert of your music we want to do a concert a live concert of your music live concert of music um papa pete he had the heather thomas too yes it is enough um and so and you know, like I came from performing background in the in the eighties. You, you we we put up that old. Hold on, uh, uh, I didn't. I never. I just put up a picture. I didn't show it yet. <laughs> you show it if you want. Oh, I'm showing it. Oh, 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 oh it was. I, was I got about showed. fifteen more minutes though. So we. Okay, no worries. Yeah, 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 yeah. My wife's gonna kill me on a Saturday. But yeah, this is Diamonds in the Rough. That was playing at Forest Park in Springfield, Massachusetts. Look at that. Big yeah. old keyboard tie, and that I was sitting on a box, standing on a box. There's me on the right. That's a uh, on the so keyboards. Up top there. That's a Juno one on the top, rolling Juno one, and on the bottom it's a Quai, a K three or a K four, I believe it was. Um, and those were my two keyboards. Um, and that was uh, so. This is Destinations Unknown. Yep. And 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 all these. Guys, my guitar player just got into a car accident and passed away last year. Oh, the guy on the left, man, his name was John Kitchen, that. and he was the biggest Eddie Van Halen fan. We we loved Eddie together. Uh, but um, look at that! How is that? There he is. is that eighties or what? That no, is no, 80s. the guy behind me with his. Oh yeah, with his. He looks like Captain Lou Albino. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that's that's Joe, and we had about a hundred people in the audience, and the mayor came by and and introduced us, I think. And uh, but uh, yeah, that was me. That's me playing Destinations on That is yeah. Some pictures there, and uh, I had a little solo at the end. But uh, this is yeah, awesome. Just Scott. Those are and there's other three, we there's three or four songs. other songs on YouTube besides this from from this uh, show. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, uh, um, uh, is this love? Is, is this love? Song. Right. Yep. I, yeah. I'm a here. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I, I tell you what, that's another thing I got to do, and I'm serious when I say this. 
We we recorded our first album in a very very famous recording studio. You can Wikipedia Google this Longview Farms, and it's in Massachusetts. And Longview is where because Jay Giles band was from was from uh, was from Springfield as well. So they did their things there. Uh, you know, Centerfold and all those great songs, but also the Cars, because this was outside of Boston, Aerosmith. So all of the big Boston area bands would record at Longview Studios, as well as like some great, I mean, just massive bands. And so we recorded our first album there. So I have all of the, we did a whole album, 10 songs, and I'd say probably about seven of them were, were the vocal versions on the Terminator. I should release that album and put it out on like CD Baby so that people yes. can like download it. That would be pretty cool. I have to go back and, and I have the two inch masters uh, in there, but I'll, I'll have to get digital versions because they're, they're, they sound really good. I mean, our singer was John, who was the guitar player on the left, uh, was our main guitar player in the pink shirt um, who passed away. He was, he was, Eh, but uh, but the music was was pretty fun for for eighties pop rock. Yeah, we no, it really is. And, My, you know, we, were, we were doing the eighties rock thing. The 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 other the other piece now that has been added to my bucket list is when when all of this COVID nonsense is over, um, yeah. and and we can travel and and either you're either you're on the east coast or or I I'm on the west coast. I got to get together and jam with you. I mean, I, yeah, you know, I, it, it's interesting. Cause I, uh, like I, through COVID because of in television, everything that's going on. Um, like I have not played music cause I've been off the road. Cause like when you're on the road for 20 years, it's constant. Right. You know? And so, look at that, that guy, look the at shirtless that. guy in the background. <laughs> oh yeah. That's totally, those two are brothers. And and those 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 were oh this is the end oh I'm doing my oh, solo now yeah, look yeah, at yeah, turn it up face. look at, I had those chipmunk cheeks back yeah, then but look at that look at you go see a feller keyboarder right it's awesome there you go look at that. August first that was 1987 there you go that is that um, is awesome but uh, what was I talking oh what uh, the, the hell was I just talking you, oh yeah that, so I was, when you play it every day and you're on the road. You know, it starts to become a job. I yeah. haven't picked up a guitar really, and or or play the piano in probably a year. Wow! <laughs> uh, and you, now, you have been you have been month, busy. Though. I have a yeah. show next month in Texas. I know. I saw that. Look, yeah, I, video game wait, live show March twenty seventh in Lubbock, Texas. I haven't even announced it yet because they just called me last week. I'm going to be well, announcing it this you coming. You just week. did. You just did. Just did, but you know. Um, Look, I, 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 so I, I got to get my shit in gear. I got, yeah. I got to like, you know, start to play again. Look, I got, I, I, when you, you've got it, you got to come somewhere close to Baltimore when you guys start back up. Oh, um, we're we're always. Uh, I mean, we've played, we've played Baltimore. We've we've played uh, uh, all around uh, Virginia. We've played Wolf Trap. We've played. Uh, the Kennedy Center, we sold out yeah. a bunch of times. We sold out Wolf Trap a bunch of times, uh, but Baltimore. Uh, we gotta uh, get you. We gotta get you up this way. I can get to Baltimore and I can get to Philly. Wolf Trap is about a three-hour drive for me, but I can get. Okay. I'm about an hour and a half from Philly. I'm thirty well, what's minutes the, from what's Baltimore. What's that? Was it called the Landmark Theater? Um, that one. Oh well, we have the Royal Farms Arena now. Um. There's also okay. the Hippodrome, which is a great place. Um, uh, I don't think Landmark Theater is open anymore. There's one in Chicago, but there isn't one here anymore. Um, um, I'm trying to think where I played when I played in Baltimore. What? Uh, there's the the, the 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 couple of places. There's the Lyric. There's the, I played the Meyerhoff. It's the, Meyerhoff. the Meyerhoff. Okay. The Meyerhoff Meyerhoff. Symphony Hall. Yes, that's a great place to play. If you come back to the, if you guys come back to the Meyerhoff, I will bring. And Peter HDK, he's in the, he's in the chat. He said he's coming. I'll bring my kids. I, I I want, I would love for them to, to know. And I'd love, I would love my, I really do want my kids to meet the man behind the oof sound. 
because huh. they, I mean, they really do. My son, my my eleven year old, he's you know mild autistic, so he he focuses on things. He'll walk around the house and he'll just randomly just say "oof," and I'm like, you know, I know the guy who did that. <laughs> so, Pop, Papa Beats, very kind. He says you only look about three years older, Tommy. Jeez. There you go. <laughs> that was that was I, that was thirty five years ago, right? About thirty. <laughs> 37 years ago? 35? Yeah. All right, so we'll wrap up because I know you got to go. And please thank Shannon for letting you do this on a Saturday. I know, you know, I had to thank, I had to thank my wife too because she took my, – my, yeah, my youngest my youngest son is doing uh, dance uh, – some sort of uh, dance acting thing. And this is usually my time to take him, so she took him today. So I owe my wife uh, probably a, a, a nice dinner. Uh, but please thank, please thank Shannon for letting you come on and, and hang out with me for a little bit. This is, this to me, I you see the look on my, you see the smile on my face. This is, you yeah. know, this is what I've always wanted to sit down and talk to you about. And and this is made, it. Yeah. this has made my time. And 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 again, when you talked about earlier, you know, you don't care how big a channel is, you don't care about the. Again, you know, you and I talk offline you and i you know you and i have talked on the phone you and i have become we start talking about other things and 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 I, that to me shows exactly who you are that you are a you are a musician who has credits out of the out of the the yin you are a touring musician you have all rights to ignore most of us and here you are i consider you a friend of mine now and that, to me, is something that if you had asked me that 20 years ago, I would never have thought in a million years. So I appreciate that about you, and I appreciate everything that you have given me, given my channel. Um, and like I said, I, you know, it's sometimes it's why I just ping you and say, hey, man, how's your weekend going? Because I don't want – I've always – I also don't want this to just be about, hey, he's a next level gaming. No, it's not about that with me. I I am just I am thrilled to have to have gotten to know you better and and this today has just been phenomenal. I can't I just can't even to be able to sit here and play your music for you too. I'm <laughs> That's like embarrassing, you know, I gotta tell you. No, no, I am I am like I'm like, oh my god, let me make sure I hit this note right. <laughs> so No, don't worry about it. And it was great because I, I wanted to we, we got into some because like you said, Stuart uh, you know, ha- had like this idea where, and he's more of a guitar guy. So yeah. we were able to, so like we, there's two, you know, separate streams here, but we, I don't think I, I might've said one or two of the same story. So it was really great, you know, no, like, that we, and, 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 your gonna, perspective and his perspective about music and stuff was totally different, which was great. Well, and because I come from, he's, he, I've been playing all my life. I, I start, like you, like I started banging on a, on a, on a play piano when I was four. And so I started lessons when I was six. Stuart got started, he told me he got started when he was in his 30s. And that to me is as impressive as anything because it, it also shows you are never too old to get started. And so I'm very proud right. of him for that. And uh, I'm gonna Great. make sure people go and watch watch your your interview with Stuart too, because I thought at least the first hour before I had to come yeah. on and do NLG cool. was awesome. So very awesome. very very quickly, well, thank because, you everybody in the chat. Yeah, very 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 quickly because somebody did ask, and I do want you to you are working okay. on the Amico. What music and stuff are you working on as far as composing with the Amico? Now, Astro Smash, of course, is one. Uh, Astro Smash, Night Stalker, um, Shark Shark, Snafu, and Moon Patrol. All right. And that's just the start, right? <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for people to hear the Snafu music. It's funny. Nice. Cool. So, guys, awesome, everyone. thank you. Tommy, thank you so thank much, you man. All. So, we uh, will... Uh, we'll see you guys. Yeah, we'll see you guys very soon. I'm going to get us out of here. I uh, don't have our closing video. I'm not even worried about it. So uh, I'm just going to – actually, yeah, I will because the friends of NLG are in here. So everybody have a great afternoon, and we'll talk to you soon. And, uh, man, I don't even know. Just mm, Great, great day. See you guys. Awesome. Thank you, man. All right, hang out, and I'll finish this up. Peace.